Thank you for joining us today on the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. I pray that your time invested here with us will prove to be a blessing to your life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we pray now that uh, you will keep us, guide us, and use us in your service and touch your people's ears that we may have expository listening ears that we may hear as it were your very voice speaking directly to us that we may become more doers of your word than just hearers in jesus name we pray amen uh today we are going to be talking about romans chapter 13 verse 8 through 10 romans chapter 13 verses 8 through 10. Our subject will be fulfilling the law through love. Fulfilling the law through love. And you might recall, I hope you remember that we, we're doing a series on love uh, is more than just words. Uh, love is more than just words. Uh, now Romans chapter 13 verse 8 through 10, I'm reading the English Standard Version. It reads, Oh, no one anything except to love each other for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, uh, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, uh, you shall not uh, uh, steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandments are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, and therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Now, in verses 1 through 7, Paul has spent some time uh, in encouraging uh, the church how to interact with uh, those outside of the church, especially uh, secular leaders and like policemen and and those that are in charge, those that have only power that is given to them from God. And they are to use that power to our, for our, to, 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 to protect us and to care for us. Uh, and they have to be careful that they don't uh, use it in a corrupt way to only benefit themselves. And so now, in verse uh, 8 through 11, Paul moves to uh, enlarging the circle of responsibility by including other people beside government of uh, officials. Love one another is the basic principle of every Christian's life. Uh, John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35, Jesus says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. And by this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. So I always say at this point that love is a Christian's uh, ID card. Everybody can tell who you are, that you belong to the Lord by the fact that we love others. Now, when we practice love, there's no need for any other law because love covers it all. If we love others, we will not sin against them. We will not do anything that will injure or cause harm to them in any way. This explains why the Ten Commandments were not referred to often in the New Testament. In fact, the Sabbath commandment is not quoted at all in any of the epistles. As believers, we do not live under the law. We live under grace. And our motives for obeying God and helping others is the love of Christ in our hearts. The love of Christ in us motivates us to love others. Does the statement, owe oh, no man anything, refer also to Christians' financial practices? Some people believe that it does and that it is a sin to have a debt. 
There's a guy named I. Hudson Taylor, who was a great uh, missionary, a godly man, a missionary in China. He would never incur a debt based upon this verse that says, owe no man anything. Even, uh, you might not have heard of, of uh, uh, I. Hudson Taylor, but I'm sure you've heard of Charles Spurgeon. Spur St Charles Spurgeon was of the same mindset. He was a great Baptist preacher and had the same conviction that it was important to never owe anybody anything. But now let's look at what the Bible says. The Bible does not forbid borrowing or legal trans financial transactions that involve interest. What the Bible does forbid is the charging of high interest, robbing the brethren and failing to pay uh, an honest debt, failing to pay what you've entered into a contract and agreed that you would pay. And you, 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 you got something else you want to do with the money, so you, you, you just don't pay your bill. That is not a biblical understanding or correct interpretation of the Bible. Now, Exodus chapter 22, verse 25 through 27, I'm reading the English Standard Version, uh, says, if you lend money to any of my people with you who are, are poor, you should not be like a money lender to him, and you should not exact interest from him. If ever you take a neighbor's cloak in pl pledge, you should return it to him before the sun goes down. For this is his only covering, and it is his cloak for his body. In, in what else shall he sleep? If he cries out to me, the Lord says, I will hear, and for I am compassionate, and I will correct the situation. Nehemiah chapter 5, uh, one, verses 1 through 11 talks about price gouging with interest and and charge overcharging for your service or or for what uh, you are selling somebody, and and it talks about charging excessive high interest to each other that it is forbidden among believers especially, and it's amazing at how uh, so often we accuse some other uh, of of doing to us what we do to ourselves. And that's just not right. We should, uh, as, uh, uh, well, we get to that. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12 says, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men do to you, do even so to them. For this is the, uh, the law and the prophets. In other words, treat others the way you want to be treated. Matthew chapter 25, verse 27, and Luke chapter 19, verse 23, indicates that banking and investment for a gain is not wrong. You remember the story of uh, uh, the uh, uh, guy that had was given five talents and one given two talents and the other one given one talent. The one with five talents... Uh, uh, put the five to use and he gained another five. So the uh, master had gained. When we gain, the master gained. And when the master gained, we gained. But, and then the one that had two talents, uh, he in, put it to use and he, uh, instead of having just a two to return to the master, he had four. And the master praised them for their wise investing. But the one that had one talent, he thought he was being smart and he went and dug a hole in the ground and buried the one talent. And when his master came back and we all would have to give an account what have been given to us and everything that we have has been given to us. Everything has been given to us. I don't care how you think I look, you might think I look ugly, but that's what's been given to me and I'm thankful and I have to be uh, put it to good use instead of walking around, oh, I'm ugly, I like everybody say, I have to, I'm not gonna get the big head, but I value what has been given to me. 
It's a fact that no one should get into unnecessary debt or sign contracts that he cannot maintain. Thou shalt not steal, but to make Romans 5 and 8 apply, it applies to all kinds of legal obligation involving money. Uh, that, that's kind of stretching the fact a little bit to say that you, you shouldn't uh, enter into any transaction. You ought to be wise. Now, uh, Romans 13 and 8 in the message version says, don't run up debt except for a uh, huge debt of love that you owe each other. And when you love others, you complete what the law has been after all along. For the law, uh, uh, love is fulfilling the law. In this section, Paul has centered on the very heart of the problem, which is the human heart. Because the heart of man is sinful. God established governments, but the law cannot change the heart. That, that's why uh, 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 putting a person in, in prison doesn't rehabilitate them. Because any of those acts cannot regulate the heart. And when the heart is messed up, the whole individual messed up, change the heart, then you change the individual. Man's heart is still selfish and cannot be changed, uh, but only by the grace of God. Uh, Romans uh, 13, verse 8 through 10, in essence, talks about Christ-likeness, being like Christ. For uh, from, from citizenship, which is uh, disposed of in the preceding verses uh, of the uh, 13th chapter of Romans, the apostle passes on to the Christian spirit, uh, spirit as manifested in unneighborly relationships. He here enters into the very spirit and essence of God's law, showing uh, it to be love. We might be able to pay off all of our debts and owe no one anything. But love is a debt that can never be paid in full. It's an obligation that abides with us always. Love is a law laid on us in perpetuity or it's an ongoing thing. It's for all times. All the commandments of the second table or tablet that was given to Moses are covered by this one law. No one in his right mind would ever seek to discharge uh, himself from such a law. Biblically speaking, Jesus taught that the Ten Commandments could be reduced into two commandments. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 34 uh, through 40, uh, we uh, learn about the great commandment. And, and he had just finished uh, talking to uh, the Pharisees and, and answering their question. I heard a preacher say today, if you ever get involved with uh, atheists, uh, just keep asking them questions. They, they believe that there is no God, but keep asking them questions, keep asking them questions, keep asking them questions. And sooner or later, hopefully, you can lead to them to admitting that there must be a God somewhere. But again, uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 34 through 40 reads, But when the Pharisees heard that, that uh, what Jesus had said to the uh, Sadducees, uh, the Pharisee, when the Pharisees heard uh, that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all of your mind. And this is the great, uh, the great and the first commandment. And the second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments 
depend all the law and the prophets. It is here that our divine sonship is realized. It's like here that Christ likeness begins. God is love. And in comparison, as we are loving uh, like Christ Jesus and his father above, in other words, God is the source of love. It came to Jesus who laid down his life for us and we should be willing to love sacrificially to others as we talked about last week. Galatians chapter uh, three verses 27 through 29, the message version I'm reading this time says, your baptism in Christ was not just washing up for a fresh heart. It also involves dressing you in a, an adult faith wardrobe. Christ's life, the fulfillment of God's original promise. In Christ's family, uh, in Christ's family, there can be no division into Jews and non-Jews, slaves and free, males and females, among our, all of you are equal. This is that is, we are all in common relationship with Jesus Christ. And also, since uh, you are Christ's family, then you are Abraham's famous descendants, heirs according to the covenant of promise. And, 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 and what that's saying in a, in a, in a, in a, in a short way of putting it, uh, and an, uh, an applicable way of putting it, all of the things that we find to divide us or we allow to divide us should not divide us. We're all supposed to be Christian. And we're living in a time where God is allowing the veil to come off of what we say we are because it really shows up in our actions. On January 6th, we saw what was supposed to be Christians that were not acting like Christians. And we dare not say that we are one thing when we are something else because God will judge. Now we are to exhibit the love of God in Christ Jesus, willing to give to others what we might need to save our own lives. That's called self-sacrificing to others and obedience to God because Jesus died we are now recipients of eternal life because he gave his life in sacrifice. He died one Friday on an old rugged cross. They buried him. But early Sunday morning, he rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. The same love that rules in heaven should rule here on earth. Can I say that again? The same love that rules in heaven should rule our hearts here on earth. We should put love into action. And if we truly love one another, we will fulfill the law of God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for keeping us, guiding us, and using us. And we pray now that you would give the increase, that your word may come alive in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, thank you again for joining us this morning for uh, whenever you might be joining us uh, viewing this video. I pray that God will bless you real good and that uh, you will have received something that you can put to use. Uh, don't forget one thing that you can do that's simple, but it can be life-saving is mask up and practice social distancing and wash your hands often and the life you save just might be your own. With that, I'm out of here. Bye-bye. Take care. Love you.